The first thing I want to do is talk about what is the four color map problem and then what do I mean by common sense proof of that, okay? So here's just an arbitrary map, if you will, and what map makers realized is that if they wanted to color a map that they only needed at most four colors. That's it. But they had one little limitation on that. They didn't want two adjacent um, areas to share the same color. Okay, so if you share, if this space and this space share a border, then they must be different colors. So I'm just gonna number, put numbers in place of colors, okay? So let's say we color this with one color, color one, and uh, we can't color this one with one because they share a border, and this would all look like one piece to your eye. So that's gotta be number two. And um, this one here does shares a little bit of a border with one, so it too has to be its own color. So we may, and it can't be two because it shares a border with two. So we'll make that color three. And then of course, <clears throat> this can be two because it doesn't really, like this is badly drawn there. Let's draw that a little bit better. Yeah. This does not share a color with two. It does with one and three, and so I can reuse two over here. So in this particular case, I only needed three colors. But what they found was that, the, that in general, if you're doing a map of the, of the world, of countries, or of cities, or of counties, it didn't really matter. Four was the limit. So the idea was, could we prove that four is the limit? Do we know that there, aren't, there isn't some map somewhere that you could conjure up that would require five? So that's the, that's the four color map problem, first and foremost, okay? So what do I mean by a common sense approach to this? Well, I'm not a mathematician. Uh, I don't know how to do a formal proof, but I can think about the problem and I can um, logically take you through step by step so that, and you can think about it with me and we can go step by step until we get to a point where we go, oh yeah, that makes sense. Now, making sense and being mathematically proven are they're very different things. So I'm not going to get us to a mathematical proof um, because I don't know how to do um, proofs. But I can certainly get you to a point where you believe that you've logically concluded, and properly so, that four colors is the maximum for all maps. So that's what I'm going to try and do today. So, okay, so the first time I saw this problem, I started thinking about, um, I instantly went to thinking about it as an abstract problem, right? And so I sort of saw it as, okay, I have all these, 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 you know, these areas, these countries or states or whatever, it didn't really matter. And if I had a map where they all shared borders with everybody else, then that would that would be it. That let's say I, say a hundred was the right answer, not four. Then I the the most I could ever create is a map where everybody shared with everybody else. And the minute I added one more person in the hundred and first area in, he couldn't share with everybody for whatever reason. Then I would know a hundred was it right. So I instantly went to that kind of thinking, and I thought, okay, so that's going to be my generalized approach. I'm going to approach it like that, but. But I leaped here. I took a huge leap of going from concrete to an abstract. Okay, so the previous drawing we had up here was a very concrete example. Um, this is a very abstract one. So let's start with the concrete and we'll work up to um, my abstraction. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a land mass or a mass or an area of some sort, some sh odd shape. That, I, in my head, I instantly represent as just some dot. Okay, now if I just draw the dot, I can draw an infinite number of shapes around that dot, right? I could even draw a square around that dot, a circle, anything around that dot. That dot can represent every single map with only one area on it, okay? So that's the beauty of the abstraction, right? Even though I can have hundreds of, uh, or an infinite number of maps with an infinite, you know, infinite varying shapes, for that, one, for that one area, I can represent all of those infinite maps with that dot, okay? And so if I have a second one, I can represent it with another dot, that space with another dot, okay? For this guy, but then here's the other thing. I wanna 
the important thing here with the four color map um, problem is that we really care about border sharing. So how do we represent border sharing in our abstraction? This is an abstract model we're building here. Well, it's easy. We can just draw a line between them. Right? So that's sort of what I instantly lead to. I'm, I'm sort of an abstractor. I tend to do that um, very naturally because it's what I do in my work. So I leap to that, but I really needed to come back from that, slow down and sort of think it through, um, even though I had a generalized approach. So this represents um, all maps of two areas that share a single border. Because I can draw anything around these, right? I can draw a circle around this guy and a square around that guy, right? And um, um, that would represent that. Now it's a very bad example, actually, um, because the circle is not going to share like a point of a border, right? So let's draw this as a, as a different kind of a thing. There, there, I can draw that, right? A circle will not share a border. Okay, so some other oddball shape. This is another oddball shape. They actually should meet here. So I'm going to get rid of that. That was a bad example. There. So I can draw, and I can draw another one. I can draw another one where they um, share an, a border. Okay. So this single two points with a line between them represents every map, an infinite number of maps, where you have two areas and they share a single border. Okay, so that's good. That's useful. Okay, so <clears throat> what do we have so far? We have um, a dot represents a space. Okay, and I don't need this anymore up here. So let's see. And I have a dot, a dot, and a line represents a space like that and this thing like that. Okay, so those two things basically are sharing. Um, a border, so that's that's good, okay. And um, we, let's keep going, okay. So now, what if I wanted to do three? Well, um, I could draw something like this, right? That would be that would represent something like this that shares with that, and then these two share, okay. But notice, there's nothing, no line from here to here, and these two do not share a border. So that's sort of my abstract language or model for how I can represent more complex things. And what's great about this is it's, it represents an infinite number. This represents a very concrete, a single map with this example, but this represents all where two share and this shares with a third, okay? Or two share a border, or there's just one. This will represent an infinite number of those. This side represents a single example. So by working in this realm, in my model, I can work with this and know that I've represented every possible map in that, on that side, anything you could draw that is represented by this. Okay, so we've got that. One other thing that's um, kind of important is I realized when I drew my, my squiggly mess with all these things and everybody connecting to everybody and everything, I instantly realized that these lines are all kind of like crossing over each other and everything. And, and it, there's, a, there's a real good reason for why that st stuck out in my mind. And it stuck out from what happened to me when I was in the sixth grade. We had um, a permanent uh, uh, substitute teacher. Permanent in that she was going to stay for weeks and weeks while our regular teacher was out sick. And um, we were kind of mean to her and I think, you know, I feel bad to this day, but I mean, we were pretty awful to her. She's a substitute teacher and we were nasty to her day in, day out. And I really believe that she gave us this homework assignment to punish us. So here is the homework assignment. So it's a little bit of a tangent here, but I think it'll be useful. So she said, okay, she goes, you have three homes and you have the gas company, the electric company, and the water company. And they each want to run a line to each one of these homes. And here's the only thing, they cannot cross. So it turns out that if you want to stop the video and try this, um, go ahead, um, do that now. But I'm going to sort of spoil it for you in a minute. Um, so it turns out that this is impossible. You cannot do it. You cannot have um, three lines go to this, and three lines go to that, and three lines go without somebody crossing it. And we'll come back to this 
because it's directly related to this. And what you'll what 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 I feel is that it was sort of cruel for her to give us that that or what I felt I should say is it was cruel for her to give us this assignment where there was no answer. Um, and I think it was, I felt it was cruel because it had never been done to me before. But yet, I learned so much from this. Now, she didn't teach us the next day and go, okay, this is the lesson. I really think she was trying to pay us back. Um, we didn't even talk about it hardly. But, um, but I kept thinking, like, why was this such a big deal to me? And I realized that I'd never had a problem that didn't have a solution. And it made me think differently than I'd ever thought before. This was impossible, and I want to understand why it was impossible to do. And so um, that was helpful, and actually helped me in thinking about this as well, in, in some ways. So um, we'll come back to that. But line crossing is sort of like the next step that I thought about. And I thought, okay, well, it, can you actually cross lines? So <clears throat> let's do that. Let's cross the lines. Let's... Um, Let's see what that would be, right? So let's take something super simple, like that, and like that. And let's see if I can draw land, uh, land masses around that such that I have a real map. Okay, so <clears throat> now remember, these two have to share a border. So let's do like, there's a land mass, and then the next one has to share a border, so there's a land mass, okay? Now, same thing has to happen with these two land masses, right? So I can draw a land mass around. Now, notice there's no line between this guy and this guy, so he cannot share a border, okay? So I'm going to start drawing a piece around there. Now, here's the problem. I, how do I... There's, like, no way to draw this around that such that I don't infringe on this piece here or this piece here, which would make them share... Two colors share... Eventually, we share a border. Now... The only way to do this is if I go over the top of this, like that. If I were to draw across something like that. Well, you can't have a landmass on top of a landmass, right? You imagine it's a country. You can't have this country on top of that country. They just, that just doesn't exist, right? Because we're on a flat earth. So, and all these are flat maps. They're all two-dimensional maps. So, so there's no way to draw this without this guy overlaying this guy. There's no way for this guy to share a border with something across over here. Um, where they cross, where the lines cross. Now, granted, I could draw the line around here like that, but that's different. That's, that would be the landmass going in this direction. I'm trying to keep this line in between, still inside my, my land masses. Okay? So there is no way for me to draw this. Um, it's impossible without overlaying one landmass on another. And because of that, um, and we're only talking about two-dimensional maps here, that's illegal. You cannot have lines cross. Okay, so that's good to know because in my original um, thought of a hundred, you know, whatevers, um, I was just drawing lines like this. Well, that's illegal. That's a not a real two-dimensional map. Okay, so um, as we um, build and aim for this optimal, optimally shared border map, we will, um, we will have to make sure that we never cross lines, and that's super, super important. Okay, so that's, that's really an important thing. Now, that's it. That's all we need. At this point, we're pretty much ready to, uh, to embark on trying to produce a, ma a maximum um, sh uh, a map where everybody shares borders with everybody else. So basically, the, the goal is to start with one. We'll start with one. Right? So you start with one, and every time I add another landmass, that new landmass is going to share, so he gets his own color. But the new landmass is going to share a border with everyone in, in the pre-existing map, in the current map. And because of that, that means that he too gets his own unique color. And every time I can do that, I, each person who comes to the party gets their own unique color. Because he's going to share, the new person is going to share with everyone, and that means that he needs to have a unique color. Okay. And the minute that I can, I go to add one more dot to my map, or this is my abstract map. As soon as I add another landmass, and I can't share with everyone, I'm done. I've got my maximum. That last guy, and he's out. What was on the page will be our maximum. Okay. So let's start. So have first one, second one comes in. He shares with everyone. There, we're done. Let's add a third one now. So I'll add a third one. Doesn't really matter where. I'll add it there. He's got to share with everyone, okay? Which means he gets his own unique color. 
everybody, so everybody has a unique color. We have three colors. Okay. I'm going to add a fourth one now. Add the fourth one in. Now, okay, so now for the first time, it really matters where I add it. It didn't matter where I add the third one. I'm going to wind up with some kind of triangle no matter where I put it here. I put it over here. This triangle would be over here. Really, but now it really kind of matters because I have an inside or an outside that I can add this to. So let's look at both those cases. So I'm just going to pick one. I'm just going to put it on the inside for now. So we put it on the inside. He can share a border with everyone. Okay. And that works fine. Now, let me redraw this. Okay. So I'm going to redraw this, but I'm going to add him on the outside. Okay. So add him, uh, say, here. Okay. So then he shares with him. He shares with him. And then he's got to share with everyone, right? Because we want to make sure he has a unique color. So I have to run it around like this, sharing with this guy. Okay? There. Now, notice what's happened here. What's happened here is when I go to add a fifth to either one of these, I'm in trouble. Um, because I will cross. If on the fifth one, so let's do this in a different color. Hopefully this isn't. That's, okay, so if I add the fifth, say, here, okay? There's no way for him, on the outside of this, there's no way for him to get to him. There just isn't. Because I'd be crossing the line. If I added him here, there'd be no way for him to get to him. I can't draw a line from there to there because this guy, would, it, he'd have to cross. There's just no way to do it. Okay? So, no matter where I'm adding, on this, I'm doomed. Four is it. So this guy's out. And this guy's out. Okay. So now, let's try it with this. Um, if I add it in here, I can't get to this guy. If I add it in here, I can't get to that guy. And if I add it in here, I can't get to this guy. Because they would, they would cross. So, notice something, though, that's interesting. <clears throat> when I added the fourth one, this is the fourth one, by the way. This is the fourth one, and that's the fourth one. When I add it on the outside, okay, um, this guy gets isolated, okay? Because I went around him to here. He gets isolated, right? So he's completely isolated. When I added him on the inside, he's isolated, right? And that isolation, that, that being that, that things can exist on, uh, on the outside um, as a, that can never get to him is the problem. So I, things can exist on the outside. I can add another person on the outside and I can never get to this inside isolated guy. And when I go on the inside of each of these, somebody else is the isolated party and the one that's sticking out. There is no way to add a fifth to this such that everybody shares with everyone. And therefore, no matter where I put that fifth, um, he has to share with fewer than all. Okay. So I'm going to add the fifth, say, here. He can share with three people, but he can't share with that fourth person. So guess what? He can use his color. So that means here, there's no, since there's no way to add a fifth, that four is our maximum. And because four is the maximum, we basically um, have shown that all we need are four colors. Because we cannot construct a map where everybody shares the borders with everybody else more than four. Because of this, this fact that you cannot cross lines. That's the key important piece. If you could cross lines, well, that wouldn't be two-dimensional. It would be an actually a three-dimensional um, map. So going back to the problem with um, the gas, electric, and water company, it turns out that you know, I spent a little time in sixth grade trying to figure out, well, why can't that be? And how does it work in the real world, right? Well, if you think about it, the gas and electric company don't care that they're running lines that cross, if you will, because their gas company might be, you know, a foot above the, the water company's line. So, oh, wait, that's a three-dimensional world. Well, the problem was given to us on a flat piece of paper, and we couldn't cross lines there. Um, it was a two-dimensional world. So... In a two-dimensional world, we're drastically limited. Um, in a three-dimensional world, you can imagine like the gas companies here, the electric companies here, and the water companies here. And then on this plane, you'd have your houses. And then you could run them to each, no problem. But once you take that thing and you try to flatten it onto a, a surface, then lines start to cross each other. And now you've violated something. Same problem here. If we were talking three-dimensional maps, there would be an infinite number of colors. You wouldn't have a limitation. 
But because we're talking about a 2D map, we actually wind up with this particular um, limitation. And it all is based on the fact that you cannot cross over. Crossing over is invalid. It's just you cannot have a landmass on top of a landmass in a two-dimensional um, map. And that's it. That's pretty much it. Like I said, it's a common sense kind of a thing. I don't know how to prove this mathematically. Maybe somebody does. Maybe you can see a flaw in my logic. Um, in any case, this, I think this is an interesting um, problem, an interesting way of thinking about the problem, and I hope you did too. Thank you.